Hello, welcome to today's video. Thank you for clicking. Today we're gonna to be talking about how you collect data. So if you're a statistician, you need the data, right? So how can you collect that data to be able to start analyzing it? Well, today we're gonna to discuss very briefly two methods for collecting data. One is going to be what we call an observational study. So observational study, just as it sounds, all you're doing is observing. You are not imposing any changes on individuals or mice or whatever it is you're studying. So one example of an observational study is a survey. So you can have a telephone survey where it's done through random digit dialing. You know, you get those phone calls and they're like, we'd like to ask you a few questions. That's a type of observational study. It's a telephone survey. You can have other surveys that you get either through the mail or through your email or maybe even in person. Any survey is usually an observational study because you're just asking individuals questions. You're not actually doing anything. Another way that you can have an observational study is if there's something that you want to study that you cannot actually impose on a person. So maybe you're talking about somebody who had had an, a heart attack or congenital heart failure. You can study that individual and maybe look at the lifestyle choices before the heart attack. Another thing is you could actually study things like Chernobyl or the Flint water crisis and see the results of that type of um, carcinogen introduced to the individual, but you can't actually impose those conditions on the individual. So that would be called an observational study. You have another thing called a designed experiment. So a lot of times we think of designed experiments when you're talking about things that are approved by the FDA. So it could be maybe a different type of drug that you're studying and you're going to randomly assign people to the old drug and the new drug. Um, it could be a designed experiment where you're looking at new methods for dealing with um, cancer. You could do chemotherapy, you could do radiology, not radiology, radiation therapy, I get it. Um, there are other ways that you can look at a designed experiment, but essentially a designed experiment is going to be where you impose a condition on your unit or subject, whereas an observational study, all you're doing is observing. You may not do anything to that individual or subject or unit. You're simply asking questions and then observing the results, whereas a designed experiment, you're going to actually be doing something. Now. The key distinction between those two things, in an observational study, because you're not really in control of a lot, because you're just asking questions, you cannot come up with causation. So at the end, your results are not able to say, this causes this, because it's an observational study. You could see that there's an association which would warrant future research, or it could be a warning. However, causation is not possible. With a designed experiment, that's where you actually, because you're in control of so much, can come up with a result that implies causation. So an observational study, you can have association, but you can't find a causal relationship. Whereas with a designed experiment, you could have um, a cause and effect result. So hopefully that helps you to understand just the very basics of an observational study versus a randomized experiment. Thank you for watching.